Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about transport of lipoproteins. So what are the lipoproteins? As the name suggests, lipoproteins are protein plus lipids. So how many type of lipoproteins there are in our body? So there are mainly four type of lipoproteins. Firstly, we have something called chylomicron. We have something called VLDL, we have LDL, and another thing we have, we call it HDL. These are the type of uh, lipoproteins that we have in our body. So as you can see, these dark blue lines and the light blue lines represent the protein and lipid content in the in these uh, lipoproteins so as in the chylomicron is concerned chylomicron the main part is actually the lipid portion and very less amount of protein is present in the chylomicron these vldl have a little bit more amount of protein but still it has a very less amount of a protein and LDL the protein amount is a little bit more and HDL the protein amount is almost 50 50 so these HDL is also called APO A family of lipoprotein and these three called APO B family of lipoprotein or these three these three uh, things especially the LDL is known as atherogenic lipoprotein why we would see in a moment so here is a man who have taken a diet full of fat and after taking the diet full of fat, the fat would be digested. With the help of pancreatic lipase, the fat would be broken down, uh, down. the triglyceride would be broken down to a uh, monoglyceride then uh, the, uh, in sequential manner like diacylglycerol, then to monoacylglycerol then to free fatty acids and here it's the uh, small intestine I'm drawing the small intestine of the man and just if we zoom into the small intestine portion if we zoom into the small intestine portion of the man what we have here is the luminal cells the endothelial cells of the lumen which have a lot of villi so let's see how these uh, free fatty acids form chylomicron inside these luminal endothelial cells these are endothelial cells first what happens the free fatty acids get inside the free fatty acid that are less than 12 carbon could be directly secreted into the bloodstream and uh, the free fatty acids that are a little bit large are not directly uh, secreted into the bloodstream instead the free fatty acid with the triglycerides I'm representing it as TG and with cholesterol representing as CHL and some phospholipids together form something called chylomicron so chylomicron is nothing but a blob of lipid and some amount of protein inside it so when this blob of lipid that means the chylomicron which is full of triglyceride cholesterol some amount of phospholipid is secreted into the blood some uh, proteins get associated with this chylomicron so what are these proteins these proteins are ApoB family of lipo apo b family of proteins so most popular one is ApoB48 other proteins are like C2 and another protein is called E so all these uh, proteins and these triglyceride and cholesterol forms this chylomicron just representing chylomicron as a small uh, blob and this chylomicron will do what chylomicron would actually migrate through the blood vessel and some course of time the chylomicron 
would actually encounter the adipose tissue adipose tissue here in the adipose tissue what will happen the chylomicron have c2 the chylomicron have e and also the apo b48 c2 will track this chylomicron particle into this uh, adipose tissue and here we have lpl the uh, lipoprotein lipase the capi capillary endothelial lipase this lpl will do what it will break down cholesterol and form free fatty acids and free fatty acids is stored into the adipose tissue thus the fat we have uh, taken in our diet is some amount of that fat is stored in the adipose tissue now what happened the thing that uh, uh, is taken by the adipose tissue after taking by the adipose tissue it still have the b48 it have these apo e but it doesn't have the c2 so this is known as chylomicron remnant so this chylomicron remnant we would go from the bloodstream and somewhere around when it reaches the liver it would be taken up by the liver so this was the uh, exogenous metabolism and transport of chylomicron so here the chylomicron would be taken by the liver why it would be taken because it has a apo e receptor and apo e receptor would actually take the chylomicron in and it will uh, break down the chylomicron and what happens liver actually also can secrete another type of lipoprotein which contain apo b100 now let me tell you that apo b100 and apo b48 which are respectively found in uh, this particle is called VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. And this apo B48 and apo B10 are actually isoforms. Uh, these are generated due to alternative splicing. And this also have C2, this also have E. Now it have plenty of cholesterol and triglyceride inside it. So these uh, VLDL, once secreted by the liver, uh, will also get inside the capillaries and with uh, in the capillaries it will migrate around the whole body and sometime these VLDL also may encounter a fatty tissue that means the adipose tissue as it has a C2 receptor as it has a C2 receptor it would be attracted uh, it as it has a C2 receptor it would be attracted towards the LPL the lipoprotein lipase and its free fatty acid would be taken up by the adipose tissue now what happens these VLDL would not remain as VLDL now uh, its triglyceride amount is less so it has less triglyceride a lot of cholesterol it still has the B100 and it has the ApoE lipoprotein but don't have the C2 because C2 is lost during the tracking into the LPL. So this new type of particle is called as intermediate density lipoprotein IDL or also known as VLDL remnant. Now this IDL what happened this IDL could get into the bloodstream and migrate all around the body and during a course of time when it encounters liver this ideal particle it can also be taken up by the liver as the liver ha has this ApoE kind of receptor or another fit of this ideal is ideal could be converted into another new species this species is called the LDL which has a lot of cholesterol a lot of cholesterol LDL only has its apo B100 and uh, LDL has apo E so what happens what happens these LDL 50% of the LDL 50% of the LDL is taken by the liver via the process called receptor mediated endocytosis clathrin coated endocytosis and 50% of the LDL 
50% of the LDL is re released into the bloodstream. So here we have LDL released inside of our bloodstream and LDL is circulating around the bloodstream. Uh, LDL is also known as bad cholesterol and in a moment we will see how, why it is uh, called as bad cholesterol. So here what happens LDL reaches uh, some uh, uh, arterial space. So LDL has a B100, a lot of cholesterol it has. So as it has a lot of cholesterol, uh, it can deposit some amount of cholesterol over here in the endothelial lining and a plaque could build up. A plaque could build up. Ultimately, it would lead to formation of the atherogenic plaques and ultimately the atherosclerosis. So, this cholesterol is pretty bad. I mean, cholesterol is important because uh, cholesterol is required for steroid hormone biosynthesis. All our steroid hormone uh, is biosynthesized from cholesterol. But the too much circulatory level of LDL, that means the bad cholesterol is harmful for us because it, it is atherogenic, because the cholesterol content could be deposited on the uh, endothelial linings and it could build up a plaque. So this was our cholesterol transport in a forward direction. Another thing is that when this uh, liver is taking up chylomicron or taking up uh, IDL, with this cholesterol or triglyceride, it is building bile salts. It can uh, biosynthesize phospholipids and from glycerol it can biosynthesize glucose also. So this is how these things are getting utilized in the liver. And here we would see another thing which we call the reverse cholesterol transport. And the key player in the reverse cholesterol transport is a new type of lipoprotein which have a very less amount of lipid inside it but a lot of protein inside it. We call this thing as HDL, high density lipoprotein. So it has a apolipoprotein A1 and it is also called as a garbage truck. So we can think about the LDL as uh, a garbage truck which is depositing a lot of garbage that means the cholesterol into the endothelial linings and thus it's a plaque is building up so these apolipoprotein one containing particles that means the HDL will come here and these HDL will come here and age as HDL is quite empty and it doesn't have that much amount of uh, lipid inside it it will take up these deposited plaque so HDL is good in one sense because HDL actually acts as a scavenger it's anti-atherogenic so LDL is atherogenic but HDL is anti-atherogenic so this HDL will migrate all around the body and HDL will take up the excess amount of cholesterol where it will take it up to gonads that means testes or ovary. So in testes, the interstitial cells will produce the testosterone because cholesterol is a precursor of those steroid hormones. And also in the ovary, uh, it can form the estrogen and progesterone. And also it can take the cholesterol to adrenal cortex. So all at the adrenal cortex hormones cortisol, cortisone, these are all steroidal hormones. So they need actually their precursor uh, uh, precursor cholesterol for synthesis. So in this organ, cholesterol would be converted into steroid hormones. And the, uh, this is how the whole uh, uh, transport of uh, the lipoproteins in our body is regulated. So now if we zoom into this section where how the liver is uptaking the 
uh, LDL particles or the VL, uh, the ideal particles and what is the exact mechanism of it. So this whole diagram is a hypothetical diagram. It's an abstract diagram. So we don't have these much big capillaries, but for better understanding, I have drawn the capillaries in big and these endothelial cells. So, uh, so and also the uh, liver doesn't have receptors like these liver hepatocytes the cells in the liver have these kind of receptors so here i am uh, drawing a surface view of a hepatocyte cell liver hepatocyte so in this liver hepatocyte it has ldl receptor yeah it does have a lot of receptor for ldl or all these type of lipoprotein particles so when the lipoprotein particles comes in it gets bind to this receptor and on the uh, inside of the cell that means in the cytoplasmic side adapter proteins get associated with it on the adapter proteins a new coat called the clathrin coat is actually built up this clathrin coat is built up clathrin is a, a just a jacket type of thing which coats this whole uh, indentation and uh, here you can see uh, uh, lipoprotein particle say for instance LDL with its LDL receptor it's totally the membrane is invaginated and now what happened a particular protein called the dynamine will come into play and dynamine will uh, pinch this uh, indentation and close it so ultimately what will happen a full vesicle containing LDL and its LDL receptor coated by clathrin is released into the cytoplasmic site and now what happened the LDL would be degraded and utilized and the vesicle containing only receptor would be recycled back to the cell surface so that more LDL particle could talk into the re uh, receptor and get inside. So this was a basic cell biology mechanism by which receptor mediated endocytosis could take up LDL particles. The same uh, basic pathway also is valid for IDL or other like protein pathways. So as per summary, which is, which is important that this ApoB containing lipoprotein, uh, especially the ApoB100 containing lipoprotein LDL is actually the bad cholesterol because it can be deposited onto the artery as we have seen and it can form a uh, atherogenic plaque that is why it's quite harmful hope you enjoyed you have understand this thing please like and subscribe thank you